Welcome to another episode. Every 10 days, D&D for families and young adventurers. Hello. 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 <laughs> it's been less than 10 days. Oh. Yeah. We play D&D don't, sometimes don't more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, as we rejoin you, strange things have happened. You stand now, Rowan, Scarlet, in a state of shock. In front of you is a, well, somebody who seems to be there to help. A kindly face, would you say? Yeah. But older. Slightly older. More, <laughs> much older. <laughs> and battle hardened eyes that have seen things that have travelled that have been places cloaked well how, how are you cloaked well I'm cloaked with like a like a green greenish cloak that covers my chainmail armour but upon closer inspection it has little um embroidery like leaves and looks looks to be of elvish make uh, when you when when you get a good look at it um and it fully covers all my armor and stuff clutching a massive two-handed sword but seeming to pose no immediate threat just moments ago your friend for the last nearly 10 days in in game time has just fled filled with anguish behaving like a man possessed because literally he was possessed by a presence that you both felt a wicked wicked ancient evil in the form of a giant black blade and so you're recent companion has just fled across the grey marsh and is gone. This new character who calls himself Wendell. Wendell. Wendigo. Wendell. Wendeldon. <coughs> Wendeldon. No, what? <laughs> Wimbledy Wobble. Wimbledon. Wobbledy. Oh, this is going to be the beginning of something brilliant, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. Your new, I don't know, companion, somebody who has joined you here in the middle of nowhere, um, calls himself Wendell, stands in front of you, called to the protection, called to your protection after seeing what was going down with Maverick and his wicked blade that seemed to hunger for your souls. Maverick, in a moment of control, overwhelming control, managed to... to outwill the sword and flee in his last ditch effort to save your lives and as the minutes pass he is gone also gone from the party is your sidekick for the last few days no. Tem Tem Temble washed quickly down river as you as you endeavoured to cross it hours ago so there is uncertainty everywhere. And so we join the three of you at the site of some great ancient battle. The, the night is yours. <laughs> well, uh, this is interesting. I didn't think I'd find anyone else out, out here. Uh, and where are you from? Oh, uh... I'm Wendell, nice to meet you too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Rowan. I'm Scarlet. Uh, Rowan and Scarlet, that'd be, that'd be easy to, to remember. It's just like red and... More red? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, what, what, what? was going down? Um, like a, well... Like another one of the walkers or another one of... Uh, no. Um, he wasn't a walker. He was my friend. He was just some guy. <laughs> he, had a, he was good. I mean, yeah, I mean, she didn't know him that well, but I did. Companion. Yeah, he was my friend. Um, we was kind of like lost together. And now I'm 
just lost on my own. Oh well. Thanks. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I I just assumed that you're not lost. Like you seem to know where you are. Oh well, going. I was in a cage when you found me. Well, yeah. Um, no, I cut you down. You're welcome. Well, whatever. Whatever. whatever, whatever. I was trapped. <laughs> so uh, you and your impish friend over here. Impish. Racist. That's a bit rude. <laughs> you don't see many tieflings around here, you know. Tieflings, I know. Oh well, um, I thought, did I ever see tieflings in the fair world? I feel like maybe. Um, I don't know. What do you reckon? Maybe like one, but I don't feel like it would be that common. Um. Could I figure out uh the where where Rowan seems to come from? <laughs> it's quite yeah. Okay. Um, you can give me a. History or Arcana check? Great. Arcana. That's great. Uh, do I have any? Because, you know, this is kind of my field. Or... No, I'm not going to give you advantage of this. Because, uh, by the way, it's getting... It's dark now. Cool. So you can't even see who you're talking to. You can just see two silhouettes. <laughs> As a human, you're, you're in the darkness now. Night has fallen. Um, you see two silhouettes... One with slightly glowing yellow eyes. Nice. So it's quite freaky. <laughs> so nice. I should really say with disadvantage because you can't quite see. Ooh, One of them seems to have a massive hat on. Doesn't matter. Five. <laughs> you have no idea what you're looking at other than the voices you can hear. Oh, should we, uh, it's getting dark. Get the fuck out of this you know, treacherous... Why what, what do we even... This is, this is disgusting. Let's... What do you know? Where did you come from? Do you know? I did come you... from down south. I was heading up with my adventuring party, but they all got wiped out near Gormley. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Did you see any good places to rest while you was coming up here? It's kind of just like bodies and dirt around here, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Right. Let's just look around, though. I'm gonna see if I can find any kind of land that will. Sure. Be... With your dark vision, um, give me perception check. Okay. Yes. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Okay. Give us your map. I mean, you turn round, and even in the, I mean, even in the dark, you can see. Uh, your dark vision gives out mm -hmm. but you can see that the silhouette of the the land changes so you can see the utter black distant vicious tooth range looking mountain 30 miles 20 30 miles to the south as you look south mm -hmm. and still clouds and lightning over those mountains far far to the south but ahead of that you notice a change just shades of gray this right just shades of gray but you notice a change in the horizon, the near horizon, that looks like maybe some kind of wood or forest okay. about a mile to the south of your current location. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, all right. I think I'm thinking we should go that way. Yes. Yes. Sure. Okay. Good. Scarlet, could you go ahead and roll a d12, please? Oh ah. no! Don't let Scarlet roll. <laughs> No. Yes. Your favourite one to twelve. Four. Okay. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's what you notice. Okay. I think I think maybe forest floor would be better than marshy floor, you know. We should go that way. I feel obligated to stay with you just in case that guy comes back, you know? Yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, if he came back, he's my friend. I'm sure it would all work out all right. I don't know. He seemed very, very different. <sighs> yeah, that's true. That didn't seem like him at if all. If he's back without the sword, then fine. But I do not think that's going to happen. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Let's, um, let's go. Let's find a place to lay down, I think. Wait, uh, we'll start heading towards the forest? Yeah. 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 All right. So you can't see anything. I mean, it's just completely oh, black. Can I just do light you a torch? Want to hold... <laughs> Rowan um, offers you her hand. If that maybe you feel better, then yeah, then sure. Yippee! <laughs> Are you lighting a torch also? I'll light a torch. Yeah. Okay, torch in one hand. Uh, this massive hat-wearing <laughs> creature next to you, uh, in your other hand, <laughs> you start heading, walking south. Um. Every so often, tieflings have dark vision? Yep. Yeah. yeah. 
So Scarlett, you and you, Rowan, here and there, every 10, 20 feet, in this thick clay mud, um, you see these massive pock marks, big pock holes, like four foot in diameter that go down about anything from a foot to two or three feet, almost as if, if such a thing existed, um, blast, like shell blasts, you know, mm. like in No Man's Land. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like that. So as you're walking, you, you're having to sort of direct uh, Wendell around these sort of holes in the ground that you uh, can no longer see. Wait, you like oh, excuse me, you have your torch. <laughs> so your torch illuminates these, these mini craters every so often. Um, here and there, just going off your perception mm -hmm. roll from a second ago, you can see little rusted, maybe discarded pieces of old, old ancient armour. Tattered leather. Now and then, the odd boot with a skeletal bone coming out of it, of the leg. Um, everywhere. Your map does detail that this is a, a huge battle site. Yeah. And you can still see the remnants of whatever ancient conflict went down here. Everywhere. Um, for a while, you're thinking, is there other craters due to some kind of combative you know, effect. And then you realise these are all excavated graves. Mm. Because at the edge of them you can see claw marks scraping and the way in which the soil is sort of arranged it looks like something has dragged itself out of these holes. I was, when I was, when I first met Maverick, um, Maverick, I, is that the name of the Yeah, the yeah, that, that's that guy. We was um, I was walking around in like this foggy, this foggy land, and things were squirreling out everywhere, like all around me. And I had to kind of like blend in so they wouldn't see me. But I feel like that's what's blend happened. Blend in with here. that, with that hat. Oh, you, you gonna let that slide? <laughs> <laughs> My hat. Sorry, is it like a ceremonial thing, religious no. thing? No, it's me. Your, your new character is very racist. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just ignorant. Um, it's me, Ashley. Oh, uh, sorry. Maybe you'll see it in the morning. You're like a, you're an elf, right? Those ears. Yeah, yeah. And I have a mushroom on me. It's like attached. It's not. Not that. very good. Uh, you know, well-being, uh, uh, cleaning us. Got a Bunch of fungus. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm I keep myself cleanly, thanks. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's alright. Uh... The hand holding is now feeling awkward. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Let's just keep going. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry for it. It came as an insult. I, I haven't seen many, you know, people like you before. That's alright, mm. I understand, don't worry. Um, well, maybe you'll be able to see better in the morning light and be like, oh, yeah, that makes sense, you know? Yeah, sure. Okay, right. <laughs> we'll just keep going. Okay, you continue. Um, you. It takes a while. This is difficult terrain with the, the holes and the craters all over the place, these empty graves where you remember the dead rising from and walking across these lands, not just over a week ago so you continue to trudge and the the silhouette of the once distant forest looms closer and closer but as it does so you all observe the nature of this forest and you see not a single leaf but simply a thick uh, copse of skeletal trees well, um, dead trees are better than no trees, I think. Could I see this forest on my way up here? From, from this um, I'd say you would have skirted around from it, so you came up from like the southeast. So yeah, you definitely saw it yep. in the light when you were walking. There's one dead forest. Certainly is. You also see sort of saw some forest that wasn't dead. If we keep going and get to. Better forest south of here, but that's quite far. Yeah, I'm thinking we should just find a place to uh, rest for a bit. Okay, you come right up against these trees, and they are just charcoal black trunks with grey 
smoky coloured um, branches and just wicked looking skeletal twigs and branches coming off of it. Okay. We'll we'll enter the forest. All right. Um, and I'll keep an eye out for a good place, a place that seems like it would be good for Like rest. a fallen tree or like a like two trees right next to each other that we can set up like a... <laughs> okay, also here, the, the terrain starts to become more hilly. Okay. Much as the environment slightly south of Oren's home becomes hilly okay. and the castle has an elevated position, um, as you enter this forest, you find you're walking up an incline, starting to walk up an incline. Is this, do I reckon, is this a forest where I came through? Do I recognise nope. it? No. Okay. This is south. You came yeah. from, you came, you stumbled down from, uh, let's see, from up here. Right, okay. Stumbled down I'm across lost, the bridge. Like yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> uh, you folks been here? Where, where are you coming from? Don't mean to, you know, come uh, out you. I came from, like, up. <laughs> up. <laughs> Up. Like uh, the I bridge. think you crossed the bridge. Yeah. yeah. Yes. We right. did, and we lost someone. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. we don't bring it up. <laughs> oh right. So you had like a bigger party. We had a yeah. Well, we had two more people. You saw Maverick. Um, I don't think we really count the party now. With two. Yeah, people. we just like a duo or something. Oh, yeah, I've like heard of a, many duos like yourself. It's fine. Like a lot of people find their way like that. It's, you can still be a party. It's fine. Are you sure? Oh, that's good. That's reassuring. Yeah, we can sure. still be a party. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh. So. Uh. Originally, I was up from like. I was up. I remember across the bridge. This was without scars before I met Scarlet. I was like up here or something. I'll, I'll get out of the map. We can't really see. Them. Oh, you came from north near the near like the dales and that sort of thing. I don't know if it was that far. Up. Not that far. <laughs> I can't really remember. <laughs> Um, we got like a world map. I don't have one. Yeah, um, I have a, a continent map, I think. Yeah. It doesn't list many details, no, uh, but you do. I came from around there, I think, but I'm not really sure. Oh, um, right. <laughs> Do we hear that? Well, as you enter this horrible forest, yeah, you hear a range of, <laughs> oh, of sounds. Uh, Yippee! <laughs> it's never good to hear. So you came from, is, is the map labelled? Do we have like the, the actual? Uh, it's far less labelled than Remember, the Remember we, had, the we just had that guy okay, draw yeah. it. Uh, I'm sorry it's not that great. Me and Maverick just got it like drawn by the sketchy guy. Ah, uh, uh, sketchy guy because he's... Um, yeah, because he sketched. <laughs> I get it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, all right. Okay. But I came from around there. Okay. I met Scarlet somewhere. I don't know. So, is it like lower down i think it was like is it that yeah uh, kentish keep yeah you Where tell we me what, wasn't it no, no, no you met there, a kentish there. keep we met a kentish of course you did oh uh, yeah 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 i forgot what it was called yeah 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 we met there but i'm i'm from very far away well mm. originally and then we went me and some other people went to hunt some trolls and then they were found not in anywhere else <laughs> i'm sorry for your loss once again oh that's fine <laughs> But um yeah, I met Scarlet there. She was hanging off a gate. Yeah. Oh. Oh right. So <laughs> you're like you're like a like a cleric you brought her back or whatever. No, no, she was still alive. Oh, oh alright. <laughs> I just like cut her down, and then there was oh. like a bunch of trolls, and they was all outside, but we was inside, so we only fought like three or something. Um. It starts to lightly rain, oh. and the the forest feels claustrophobic. Uh, everything, especially with your torchlight illuminating only the nearby trunks and beyond that, it's pitch black. And so um, there starts to be an increasing sense of claustrophobia as you aren't following any particular path. There is no clear path. So you are kind of now just weaving in and out where you can between these skeletal trees. Um, have I like... I said I'd keep an eye out. Have I spotted any area that would be good to sit down? You can make a perception check with disadvantage. <laughs> <coughs> Fabulous. Okay. Mm. Um, perception. Eleven. Eleven? Yep. Hard to tell. You are in this literal nightmare wood. Um, 
trying to look around for somewhere to shelter. I mean, nowhere obvious. There's lots of big trees whose trunks you could sit at the base of. But at the moment, nothing that goes shelter here. Is anybody else spotted any anywhere? <laughs> can we? Can I have a look? Yeah, you can have a look. Roll a perception check. Oh no! <laughs> Wait, um, which one is it on here? Perception. Um, oh, we're going through. Nope. So your torchlight um, kind of cancels out your dark vision, yeah. so you can't see beyond the radius of the flickering orange light that illuminates these skeletal trees all around you. And you aren't on a path, so you're kind of weaving around. Um, who is kind of keeping track of direction the most? <laughs> Who's sort of in charge of that out of the three of you? Okay, I'll try. I All guess. right, survival or nature? You've got your map in your hand yeah. and you're trying to figure out where you are based upon Is that? Is it with disadvantage? Mm, yeah. Oh, I forget I said that. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, oh, this. Nice. Hooray. Survival. Oh, wait, what are I Two. Six. Okay. All right, good. Good to know. All right, well, you start to, again, there is no path. You are just going through, not densely packed, but you can't just walk in a straight line, so you're weaving in and out of these mm -hmm. trees. Um, the the rain also around you now, creating this pitter-pattering against these, um, almost like rain on paper sound against these skeletal trees all around you. Um, you continue to walk, you don't see anything that says shelter. Do you want to keep going and looking? I'm thinking we should just sit down somewhere, like find a tree or something. In the rain. Oh yeah. You two now are very aware of how tired you are. Mm -hmm. You haven't slept since you escaped oh. from the keep. Do we still have a point of exhaustion? I believe you do. Did you have one? Yeah. Yes. Then, then you've still got your point of exhaustion. We rejoin the action, right? Well, I rolled so the this evening, like, you're, you're still, your clothes are still wet. Mm -hmm. And like clinging to you uncomfortably from your. Oh no, you didn't get wet going across the river, did you? Or did you? Yes. No, I didn't. Yeah, you, you did, yeah. So you're still wet and your clothes are clinging to you. It's getting cold, it's raining again. Um, you're really wanting to be able to shelter somewhere. It's very hard to find one at the moment. Maybe we could just find some sticks and like build a shelter. You know, like, like a little teepee up against the tree. Uh, do we have like a like a like a like a sheet like a cloth? No, but we could use. I was gonna say we could use leaves, but it doesn't seem like there's any in this forest. Um, do we want to try and build a, a little? Are you saying this as you walk? Yeah. Do we? You're want... chatting as you walk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, as always. Um, do we want to try? And... <laughs> Out of the blackness, <laughs> flies. <laughs> You're not even sure what flies, but something <laughs> slams into you, attempts to try and fly into oh. your face. <laughs> okay. Um, that's a 10 to hit. Oh, yes. excuse me, with the advantage. Um, 25 to hit. <laughs> no, wait, no. What did you say to me? What, what, to hit? Something flies out of the dark. It's like you literally out of the dark, bah! like this, and just goes for you. 25 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Okay. Um... You feel something sharp dig into just here, like just into the top part of your chest, like, and in the dark you see um, it. It's something writhing around a lot, and you see twin orange pins of light that must be eyes. But it's so fast, gets this surprise attack on you. Something digs into you, and then it, and then flies off you don't get your opportunity attack because it was a surprise round i'd like everyone to roll initiative please uh -oh. how much damage did i take five points of piercing damage oh, and oh, um wendell welcome to the group i'd like you to make a constitution saving throw Yay! please sure thing. Uh, 22 22 as this spike or whatever it is this sharp thing penetrates through gets through some of the chain and and, and, and stabs into you a weird 
cold starts to spread through your body just momentarily and with it comes a strange kind of stiffness and fear that you manage to uh, uh, shake off momentarily right initiative yeah i got five i got nine ten nice all right oh, so pretty we go. bad wendell <laughs> scarlet somehow uh run did you roll nine mm -hmm. okay cool that's kind of what it sounds like. <laughs> but a bit more high pitched. You see a small you see a small creature. Um, Wendell, it's you'll go first. Some ten feet away from you. Um, your torch in one hand, you can see orange light flickering against a small, maybe eighteen inch high. It looks like a cross between a mini um what do you call them? Velociraptor? Yeah. But with feathers coming off it. Leathery wings, oh. though. This thing's got leathery bat-like wings. But it looks like a little Velociraptor. But with a much sharper beak at the front yeah. that's got all these crazy barbs coming out of it and still dripping off the end of its crazy beak is still your fresh blood. And it, and it tries oh. to drink the blood a little bit as it looks at you with these twin orange beaming eyes. Um, Wendell, you're up first. What do you want to do? Put away my greatsword and take out my shield. Yes. And as a bonus action, I'm going to cast Shield of Faith. Righto. What does that do and what does it look like? Uh, so I take out my shield and then the shield begins glowing uh, like a like a pinkish golden light, like fluctuating between the two. Nice. Um, and then, uh, how far away is it? Ten feet. Okay, I'll move 10 feet towards it. All right. And then I hold out my arm and I extend my arm blade. Okay. And I'm going to make an arm blade attack on it. All right. You this thing just out of, out of his hand, like a long sword length blade comes out of his arm. All right. Make an attack roll. Sure. Um, 18 to hit. That hits. Nice. This thing, its head bobbing madly as it kind of tries to drink up your blood. Uh, you walk, come forward quite quickly. It sees the glow, looks up with unintelligent eyes at the glow, like this, like that, as you just come forward and strike it. Okay. Uh, where's the, where's the deal? That's six points of slashing damage. Divine smite, please. Uh... <laughs> I'm gonna do yeah first level spell slot, first level divine smite. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So as the sword comes down, you both detect as the as he swings the arm blade, like almost like a punching type of attack as it comes out of his arm, like a punching slash at this thing on the ground. You all feel a sort of a hum, like a as he as he slices. And um, what kind of smite are you doing? Divine Smite, just standard Divine Smite. There's nothing uh, standard is it, about is it Divine Smite. Neither. Okay. Uh, 13 points of radiant damage. <laughs> oh, right, you've got to describe that because your sword did minuscule compared to what happens here. So how does this look? So the arm blade comes out and then around it is just like a secondary bigger blade of golden and pinkish light. And that, that mostly hits it, and as that diminishes, the blade does a bit of damage. Cool. But mostly... mostly the whole hits. forest is lit up by this rose gold, and it just... <laughs> as it hits it, <laughs> this light crackles. Actually, some of it kind of comes off the sword and goes up the trees a little bit. It is... Like, you feel it. Like when a speaker is on too loudly, and you feel it through your body in the ground, you can hear that attack as well. Like, feel it in your body as well. Nice. All right, um, <laughs> so that's, uh, okay, it, that really hurts it. And you hear, <laughs> like the KFC's in trouble. Um, all right, is that the end of your go? That is the end of my go. Scarlet, you're up. This thing is now, this 18-inch little thing is kind of like limping off. Is there anything you'd like to do? Um, I think it's pretty much already dead. Um, I'll just... <laughs> Firebolt, the thing. Firebolt, alright, make an attack roll with your spell um, attack modifier. Which is okay. that? <laughs> um, 15. 
That hits. Roll your damage for your firebolt. Is that still the 20? No, no, no. It was uh, oh. here. I think it's D10. 1D. Oh, yeah. Where is this thing? Mm-hmm. Zero. Yes. Oh, 10. Yeah. 10? Yeah. How do you want to do this? Yeah. I, um, just... What do you mean, how do I... Know? How do you want to kill this thing? I just want it straight to put it down. Okay, you just... <laughs> okay, yeah. And what is left could best be described as a cooked chicken. <laughs> if that's all that is left. It is just... <laughs> and it is just smoking. Um, your attacks created quite a lot of noise, but you've you've killed whatever this thing was. Scarlet, keep in mind, since you are a fifth level sorcerer, mm. at the bottom of both your cantrips, it'll say that the damage has increased. So Firebolt now deals 2d10 damage. Oh, right, right, damage. right, yeah, so 20. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, so you roll it twice, yeah, you roll it twice. Yeah, That's well, cool. That <laughs> and you notice that as well. Something about the, the journey you've been on or whatever, like something about the latent magic in your blood, this fiendish bloodline of yours like feel that felt more powerful like when you did that your character felt like whoa okay something feels like it's coming alive more inside of you and the arcane is flowing more more strongly all right wow that was crazy you were it was like like uh, uh that was so bright that was a bit overkill <laughs> That was so cool. I didn't even do anything. You guys were just like, pew, pew, and it was very bright and cool. Yeah, <laughs> literally that was six seconds. That was yeah. only six seconds. The <laughs> blade just I retracted back in. Cool. All right. Does that go in your arm? Or is... Yes, it does. Where does it go? Like inside? It folds up like the blade goes in half and then... But does it like... Nah, 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 nah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she actually grabbed his arm. Yeah. And what's Wendell's reaction to that? I just, that? like, push her away. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, oh, sorry. Um, so, wait, it goes up or it folds up? But how does it... I don't understand. That's pretty cool, though, either way. Thank you. Where'd you learn to do that? Uh, I didn't. I took it from a. Uh, I don't think you'd know what they are, but it was a like a machine guy. Wait. Oh, so it's not actually inside your skin, then. It is. How would you take that off of someone? It's like I took his arm and then I kind of just put it on mine. <laughs> oh right, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Was he dead or was he alive? Well, it was a. Warforged. I don't know if you know what those are. Oh, um, no, I don't. But, but, um. So they're kind of just like. Metal like They are alive, but they're made. Like a, like a, like a, like a wizard's pet. <coughs> oh, alright. Like a familiar. Yeah. And, and was he alive or dead? Oh, he was, like, dead. Alright, because I was going to say, it would be a bit horrible if you just ripped his arm off and put it in your arm when he was alive. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um. Can I look at the burnt chicken? Yes. Do I know what this is? Make a nature check. Remember, you can use Tasha's guide to work out what it takes to, at the back of it, it says uh, finding out about Uh, creatures. Oh, yeah, thanks. Um, What did you say, sorry, nature? Yeah. Sorry, I forgot. 14. Hmm. I put a 15 on this, so I'd say you looking at it, you're not sure. It looks it looks weird. It looks sort of like a, a malformed rooster. Like if you've got a but it has like lizard almost draconic aspects to it. The way its claws um go into its wings remind you of stories you've read of wyverns. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um cousins of dragons, you know, it's yeah. it's it's odd and wicked looking. Okay. Oh, just creepy little thing. All right, let's move on. I don't really like that. All right. All right. We'll keep All right. Who's uh, you're leading the oh, environmental right. aspect of this, right? In terms of trying to, you're still leading <laughs> yeah. with that. All right. Give me um, survival or nature. <laughs> Wait. So for one point of exhaustion, you get disadvantage on skill check, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. I'm doing it right now. Um. Uh. Uh, wait. Uh, ni- uh, 19. <laughs> 19? Yeah. Great, okay. Um, you realise you you 
you kind of look around you, and the Sorry. wicked mountains far to the south, which are a good natural landmark, mm -hmm. are on your left. So you've been heading um, west. And you didn't realise. You thought you were going uh, south to begin with, but you realise, oh, the mountains are actually on our left now. Yeah. So you reorient your, yourself south mm -hmm. and you continue in, in, further into the forest. Yeah. Okay, you continue further well, into I'm the forest. Well, I'm just looking south. for a place that we, that I could poss we could possibly Yeah, I'd say with the 19... I'd say another half an hour goes by, even with the 19. It being dark and this terrain being about as alien to you as anything you can think of. Um, and then after about half an hour of walking, again, winding through these forests, there's a few times you have to stop because you hear similar sounds to the one that you heard just before you were attacked. So you pause for a bit to let whatever they are pass. Distant sounds off 50 feet, 100 feet. You hear all sorts of crazy things. You even think you, even think you see another one of those will-o'-wisps some 200 feet oh, off no. the edge, you know, going. Um, the rain stops, mm -hmm. which is good, and it allows you to hear a bit better. Half an hour goes by, and you notice that you come to a, a boundary where the skeletal trees end, and it starts to, you're still going, inclining, going up hills and down hills now. The forest gets tighter, and the trees become healthier looking. Okay, that's good. Not immediately, yeah. but almost like uh, the edges of healthy skin going into a cut. It's like you, you're going into mm -hmm. healthier foliage. You want to continue into the regular yeah. forest? All right, you do so. It's not long after, as you come into the more healthy foliage and everything, that, you know, you, whilst there's nothing that says cave or hollowed out tree, yeah. there's certainly... Plenty of larger trees, oaks and, and, and plane trees, for example, mm -hmm. that you can shelter at the base of their trunks yes. if you want to. Yes. All right, then. Do you want to try and make a kind of a rudimentary, you know, like using... Count. Yeah. Well, we've got our bedrolls. Yeah, but I mean shelter using branches and things. Is it still raining? It's still raining. I'm still wet. Yeah. Yeah, it's raining. still wet from the rain, yeah, and for also sure. also for going in a river. Yeah. Um, well, you can do that with your fireball okay. easily. You could just. Yeah. So yeah, we got. I'll say with your nineteen, you're able to collect some drier wood underneath these newer trees, uh -huh. and build a rudimentary. I'll okay. give you that with that nineteen, and with the help of your fire skills, you're able to set up a campfire. Nice. Um, you know, a, a kind of a temporary bivouac, like a lean-to against the yeah. tree, from some surrounding dead branches, things like that. You make a comfortable enough camp. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have been able to long rest in that previous bit of wood. Yeah. But now that you're deeper, you can, you can so. Does anyone want to take first watch? I'll take. Yep, I'll do it. Okay, great. We so you're taking first watch? Yep. Who's taking second watch? I'll do second. Okay, I'll second, do last. last watch. All right. I don't need to rest for that long more because of my thing. Sure, four hours. Yeah. All right. For each watch, we're going to roll a d12. So... Go ahead first. Let's see. Seven. All right. The first four hours of this night, you're mainly... Well, what are you doing with those first four hours um, as your two companions sleep? Sharpening my great sword. Okay, that's not off-putting to two sleeping people at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like 20 feet away. Yeah, that's right. I'm only two feet. That's fine. You, you, you sharpen your great sword and um, keep a good lookout. Give me a perception check for your for your watch. Okay. Uh, five. All right. Not particularly aware of much. You get very absorbed in your sword sharpening, checking your gear, considering your strange friends as you watch them sleeping. Huh, they are they <laughs> are very unusual. You've never journeyed with a tiefling, and you've never journeyed with. A, such a queer looking elf <laughs> with Literally. you you notice as she <laughs> you notice as she um as she sleeps there that the the mushroom is an integral part of her head and you notice How that i'm not sleep? sleeping do you like 
yeah. Oh, yeah, you're not sleeping. I'm sitting up. And she just sits there yeah. with her eyes closed. With my head Can down. Can you lie down? Because the mushroom gets but The thing is, she way. doesn't really need to, but... Shh. That must suck. It can move. Like, it's got yeah. some... Like, yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, she, she puts her head down like that to sleep. Trance. The firelight reflects and you can see these very long ears, longer than you're familiar with with uh, a typical elf. Um, and the mushroom seems to be an integral part of her head. It's very odd. <laughs> Likewise, the sleeping lady, um, deep scarlet skin, uh, as per her namesake, um, black hair, right? Yeah. And... Um, yeah, that's what you notice. Sleeping as a regular person would. Right, okay. <laughs> uh, but you don't really, you're not really aware or perceptive as much else in your surroundings during your watch. <laughs> the four hours goes by um, and you take second watch. You're shaken awake and you bed down. How many hours have I crossed? Four per, per So I can really watch. be up for, uh, for the second watch as well. Maybe I could... Um, you want to? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, watching me sleep. Well, your watch begins while you're still meditating. Okay. I'm going to speak to you in a second. Okay. Roll D12. One. Oh, oh my God, Scarlet! Sorry. Sorry. Everyone but me is a moment. Nice, nice. Okay. <laughs> Man, I'm going to have Rue roll every time. No, for please don't. No. That's fantastic. <laughs> Okay. Um, Wendell wakes you and then beds down and Wendell. goes straight off into a, a, a deep sleep. Uh, give me a perception check, please. Roll d20 and add your perception modifier. Oof, dearie me. <laughs> um, nothing to do. <laughs> okay. Yippee. So 12 is a, is, a, is a deadly encounter. One can, isn't always... Oh, yeah. um, like a fight during your watch you what sorry what did you roll perception two <laughs> <laughs> I don't notice shit <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, for you during your watch as you sit there sort of looking around the camp looking at your new companions thinking Shit, how did I get to this? <laughs> Just days before, I was travelling with five other companions in a, in a much bigger adventuring party, almost all of whom are dead or lost or I don't know where they are. And during this time, whatever magic is in your blood feels like it's been growing. And so I don't know how that would make your character feel, but certainly you are ill at ease at this time. And as you sit there in this weird forest in a place that you've never come through here on your way to Oren's home before when it was troll hunting season so you know that this is not a good area to be in and one of the people you were just venturing with has just gone off with some cursed weird sentient sword so you're troubled and as you as you sit there keeping a watch over these weird new companions of yours. You hear a little whispers in your brain. Little whispers. You hear a multitude of voices. Some of them saying, "Keep your promises. Keep your promises." Can you just shut the thing? Keep your promises. And you hear other deeper voices. You're not sure whether they're coming from the forest around or from within you, going, you are bound to me. Keep your promises. Bound to me. Um, that's what happens during your four hours. It's very disquieting. <laughs> very disturbing. That's good. That's good. <laughs> good <don't> <laughs> um, you don't notice anything particularly during these four hours but that's what goes on for you you are not attacked um nothing else comes into the party you're four hours up and then you awaken mm -hmm. you awaken rowan for the final rest and you manage to go back to a more troubling sleep d12 please rowan 12 no <laughs> what <laughs> this is troubling 
Nice, nice. Um, Stop saying nice, I knew you were off one or twelve. This is great. Just don't wake me, please. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, don't wait me to the fight. Put that monster manual away. Um, as you awaken, uh, give me a perception check, please. Um, uh, 19. Good. Somebody actually notices shit. During your watch, you kind of get up, you know, in your typical discipline, fighter discipline, you get up and start doing your stretches mm -hmm. and warming up in case, you know, practicing your fast draw, <laughs> stuff like that, and just walking a perimeter around the camp. Mm -hmm. um, and I also go, but not actually, I'm just pretending. You <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> practicing all sorts. <laughs> During this time, um, you do notice, maybe half a mile off, with the slowly rising sun, the forest goes from pitch black and just these deep umber tones start to, start to kind of light up some of the trees. Mm -hmm. And also some half a mile elevated above the, the tops of the, of the trees, you see what looks like a ruined dark stoned tower. Okay. Um, also during this time, as you are kind of like practicing your guns <laughs> and all this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You talking to me? <laughs> yeah. You talking to me? No one else here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as you're doing this, your friends are some 20 feet off as you're just walking around and everything. You come into a, like a little bit of a clearing and you're practicing fast drawing. As you do it, you draw out and you point it straight at <laughs> an odd looking figure directly in front of you that freezes as you do it. <laughs> it looks like layers of, um, what's the stuff that, that goes up trees that's like a type like of- Like lichen? Lichen, it has like a lichen, almost like plates of a lichen-like armor on it. A head not too dissimilar to yours, mm -hmm. only instead of being being a cap, it mm -hmm. goes upwards mm -hmm. like this mm -hmm. into this myconid looking weird mushroomy shape. Where a face would be instead, there are these deep holes, pitted holes. And as it looks at you and breathes, these spores just oh. come out. And it stands there, roughly humanoid in as much as it stands on these two big stalk-like, mushroom stalk-like legs mm -hmm. that are this uh, pinks and greens and striations through them. And it just stands. It is some 40 feet away from you and just looks at you. <sighs> Spores coming out every time <laughs> it breathes. What do you do? Hello? You all right, mate? <laughs> <laughs> it takes two quick steps towards you. <laughs> All right, back up a bit, please. <laughs> do you do anything? Oh, well, I've got my gun drawn, so I'll, <coughs> keep, I'll keep it <clears throat> on it. Okay, you readying a shot then? Yes. Okay. Off to the side slightly, a oh, smaller no. one comes through. More oh. like maybe three, four feet tall. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this one has got big mushroom kind of cap on one shoulder. And its head kind of goes up into like um, like lion's mane, mm. like thick white spikes of hair mm. as it observes you. Again, no mouth. There are two big black depressions for eyes. And then these kind of like holes, like stretched holes for mouths where mouths and nose would be. Mm. Oh, and it hello. observes you. There's there are two of them now. <clears throat> um, I like your mushrooms. They're pretty pretty. Uh... 
I'm just gonna, are you, uh, I'm gonna. <laughs> the big one takes another quick step towards you. How Don't. much is it to now? Um, I'll put it at 30 feet now. Okay. <clears throat> what do you do? Can I help you? Do you, do you speak common? <laughs> They just look at you, I'll slowly try, swaying. I'll try and, uh, Sylvan. Okay. Hello? Nothing, it just takes another step towards you. Okay. Looks at you, unintelligent, but fierce eyes. All right, let me just, uh, I'll... Out from the <laughs> left now, a smaller one comes from... <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> they look like fake creatures to me. Um. No. Okay. Well, make a nature check. Uh. No longer with disadvantage. Yeah. Fifteen. No, these these look like plants. Okay. Well, you know they look like mushrooms, yeah. living mushrooms. Yeah. Right, uh, I'll take some steps backwards. I'll move like five, ten feet backwards. By the way, behind them. Towards, towards them, back towards. Them. Behind where they've just come from, by yeah. the way, and ahead of you on the other side of this clearing, there seems to be a rise, a natural kind of hillock. Yeah. That is undercut by a cave. Okay. Hey, uh, what the? Oh, you're back. <laughs> said don't wake me up no you didn't i did uh how loud are you shouting uh, as loud as i think needs to to get back to the camp okay well you're about 20 i'd say 30 feet away from them so you shout and then at that <laughs> that all of them kind of like go back a little bit like a good 20 10 20 feet okay. make um <laughs> Make constitution saving throw. Oh, dear. Oh. Uh, ten. Okay, ten was the, the DC. You don't wake up at one shout of your Gosh. own. You're knackered. Um, but these creatures, they, they go back a little bit. <laughs> oh, um, uh, do excuse me, but um, our camp is here, so like, maybe you should go back a bit. You know, like... Go back a bit. The small one runs forward <laughs> and goes <laughs> and breathes oh, no. spores out. <clears throat> I do have a re. Oh, I don't want to shoot it. Is it an attack? Is this an attack? How do you how do you perceive it? Um, I probably shoot into spores. Spores you're familiar with. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Doesn't bother you. Yeah, so I'll probably I'll. No, I won't shoot. I won't shoot. Okay. Or I shoot into the the air. What do you do? No. <laughs> um. Uh. Uh. Yeah, I'll, I'll send. A I shot. mean, it's a mushroom. This uh, to you, this is familiar. Yeah. This is not. Yeah. Okay, I wouldn't shoot. I wouldn't shoot. <laughs> okay, runs oh. forwards and just <laughs> all around, and then you hear in your head. Hello. <laughs> in your head. Hello. How? And it waves to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> oh Whoa! What are you? You're a long way from home. Yeah, I am. I am. How did you know? Cause we'll talk. Oh. Okay. Uh, are those you like your parents or something? I don't know what you mean. Are they your family? We're well, all family. Your family. Ah. Oh. Are you from the Fey world as well? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Oh. Is it because we're mushrooms? Mm. We're all connected by the spores. Oh. What's your name? Mm. I'm Colonel Sprout. Sprout. Okay, Sprout. Hello. Um, My name's Rowan. Oh, hi. Are you Rowan? <laughs> 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 yeah, it's all colourful. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Rowan. <laughs> yeah, your eyes are <laughs> So, 
so we're lost. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I kind of am. Yeah. Well, we'll always come here, Rowan. <laughs> okay. What do you do? Bend down? Yeah. It's tiny. A little, a little muscle yeah. now, right? <laughs> it's down. Okay. You're always connected as a fungal. <laughs> Boop! <laughs> like that on your nose. <laughs> that. You do feel high. You're like, whoa! <laughs> and you fall back into what feels like sort of mossy ground behind you. Uh-huh. And, like that. Uh-huh. and that's the end of your walk <laughs> for now. You can take your first level in Druid now, but you, you aren't aware that yeah. you are yet a okay. Druid. It's not yeah. like someone's come along and giving you a certificate, yeah. okay? Yeah. <clears throat> Four hours go past, um, You, but more <laughs> than that goes past. Five hours, six hours, you two wake naturally to a fire that hasn't been tended. So you wake slightly chilly. The fire is just smoking and uh, Rowan doesn't seem to be in the immediate vicinity. Scarlet, did she? Watch, Phil. Scarlet, did she uh, tell you where nope. she was going? Nope. Oh, I was sleeping. I look around. That. Okay, look around. Give me a perception check. There is a light wind this day through the uh, forest. Fourteen. Fourteen. Um, it's not that you see her, but you do hear something not far away. <laughs> you can just hear, "Hey, yippee. yippee!" Yeah, somebody having a lot of fun. <laughs> But you can't see any standing figures within the immediate vicinity. Oh. Do you want to head in the direction of the noise? Yes, I would. Okay, are you both <laughs> going to do that? Him. Yeah, okay, you both walk over maybe some 30, 40 feet into a small clearing and making um, <laughs> angels in, in the moss, you can see Rowan pupils as big as, like her, her pupils are massive, like black eyes, you know what I mean? Uh, and she's just making moss angels. <laughs> I only have one pupil. Yeah. yeah, moss angels, just on her back, like this, legs and arms going like this. <laughs> Is this like a normal occurrence? I, no, <laughs> not, not that I know. <laughs> uh, Rowan, you, you good there? As you're lying there on your back, just with <laughs> colours and all sorts going on, you see a head come over, it's sort of slightly, <laughs> but uh, of a of a a human, you know, your, your yeah. new human friend. Oh hi! You should do this. You should come down here. You have three more minutes of your <laughs> your trip. high to go. Yeah, your trip. <laughs> you should come down here. The field is is white clouds. She um <laughs> the the moss is just mud by the way, <laughs> and. The forest is not a beautiful Fey Wild forest or anything like that. Remember that. You're in a... It's not skeletal, but it's still a dark, you know, foreboding forest. And on the other side of the clearing, you can see a hillock with some trees on top of it and a big depression underneath it, like a big cut-out cave with hanging vines and stuff like that on the other side, uh, um, masking the entrance somewhat. Uh, Skylar, you! You can yeah. come down! No! Look, feel this no. boss! <laughs> no! Oh. You are filthy! Get <laughs> away from me! And uh, with that, you sort of start... Out of it. Come on. You start to snap out of it. You promptly vomit. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, <laughs> suddenly all the colour seems to drain. It doesn't all drain, but much of the vibrancy starts to diminish as you come back to your senses. There you are. Oh. <laughs> I was... Uh, uh. I thought adventurers weren't supposed to, you know, get high on the road. <laughs> That's something we say for rest stops. Oh. Well, I mean, I didn't mean to. There was like... There was a little mushroom creature. Right. No, no, I swear <laughs> there was. There was... Well, there's more of them. There was you deep. do have a sense now. This morning, you do have a different sense of the world. So, in the same way that, um, what's the word for the, the the way that mushrooms are all connected under the ground? Yeah, they've got like a little. Uh... It's not myelin. It's something else. But the mycelium. Mycelium. Yeah, yeah. They're kind of the mycelium. You have a sense of connectedness mm. that is, you know, it's profound, and you realise it's not just through the air, but through the ground as well. 
um, and it offers you some comfort on this mm. day. So long now and so far from home and your wife, this sense of like communication, connectedness, mm. it's not just a, an idea, it's something you can feel. Mm -hmm. You can feel it. Yeah, um, I saw them, they were, they were, they were pretty cool. Um, and they, um, they spoke to me a bit. Yeah, uh, tell us about it on the road. <laughs> you don't believe me, do you? Okay, so you all three of you now can see a protruding tower okay. uh, from this clearing, just poking above the tops of the trees on the opposite side of the clearing. Um, and that is facing roughly south still, okay? So you're all facing south. Mm -hmm. You've had a long rest, so all your hit points are restored back up to their normal maximum. So if you took any hit points damage... I think I was fine anyway, can we healed. Oh, yeah, okay. Cool. Hit points back up. All your spell slots are back to full mm -hmm. after your night's rest. Um, Work points. Um, okay, what would you like to do? Oh, yeah, so that tower, I saw that tower last night. I was walking around and saw that tower. How's about we go check it out, you know? Yep. I think that's a good idea. There might be some um, with gold in there. Okay, but what do we? What, what is our end game though? Like we've just lost our friend, and, and like the thing with the trolls. Two friends. Yeah, two friends. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, forget about ten. Like, <laughs> yeah, but <coughs> we we took all that evidence, and now exactly it's what like do we do? Gone haywire since true Eric left. Well, okay, so we still have all that evidence. What evidence? Right. Oh all yeah. Things okay. Happen. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Montage scene, okay, yeah, yeah, you explain it all to him. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, um, as you see, we're trying to get this evidence, but that's, a, well, we have evidence, but we're not really sure who to give it to, because, like, I'm pretty sure they report to, like, they get paid for troll ears by something in Everdale, um, some people in Everdale, but Everdale's so far away. But we was thinking we should probably tell them that they're being scammed. Mm. You know? Right, okay. So, we don't really know what to do <laughs> now. Why, why do I even make it? Can I look at the... Uh... <coughs> i tell you what you do make, is that like... It sounds like a political scam. I don't know what your character would think about politics. He's probably bored and tired with it. Like, he's uninterested in it. It sounds like the... To you... As you hear the whole story of, the, of what they're doing, experimenting to try and breed these trolls, that means that they can sell more ears uh, to get more. Um, it's like um, they get the more ears they can provide to Everdale. It's proof, right? It's proof that they are protecting the southernmost borders of the, of the Everdales. And so Everdale will send gold for that, you know, and they're manufacturing it. To you, it's just like, this is so little, it's so petty <laughs> to your character. Your character is probably the most invested because you have you were actually used as part of this scheme, so you're pissed. Mm -hmm. How does your character feel about it, do you think? She probably feels like she wants... She doesn't think it's right. She wants it to be right, and um, she's just worried about all the people that it's hurting. She's less worried about the money that they're, like, scamming, but she's more worried about how the operation has... Um, Hurted people. Yeah. Hurted. Yeah, yeah. So, in terms of your character's motivations, you know, just consider those things. In mm -hmm. terms of, with your trip last night, mm -hmm. you are now, f today you are definitely missing home yeah. more than you ever have before. Like, it's, it, it, it pangs inside you. Yeah. Because it feels so far away, but you also feel so connected as yeah. well. So, I mean, like, I don't know. That's the thing. I keep thinking, I have this idea in my head that in Everdale, there would be somebody that could help me contact my wife or get me home. Where's your wife? My wife's in um, in the Feywild. Oh, right. You're from the yeah. Feywild? Yeah. How'd you get here? I'm not sure. I was just walking, walking along, and then I was just here. I was walking in my forest, and I ended up in a forest on this plane. That's brilliant. It's not brilliant, actually. Do you know where this was? Uh, yes, I think roughly, yes, I do. Oh, great. Do I know where this is? I can't. No, I, I do. 
no, I don't. You I don't just, remember where, where you crossed over? I just know that I crossed a bridge, like, after. I was running after I got here and I crossed the bridge, but... Uh, I don't actually remember exactly where I phased through. And, um, it's really bad because I was on the way to to the Shroom Council, Shroom Court, <coughs> to, to ask for help for my wife because she's really sick at the moment. And I've just been away for, like, nearly a ten day. And I don't know what's happening with her. I'm really worried. Look, you're a magic man. Do you think, um, <laughs> do you have any way to talk to people? Or, like, could you get me back to my wife? I'd love to go check out this, um... Wherever you, whatever caused you to, you know, come through. I don't remember. But I'm saying, do you have any magic that could get me back to my wife? Nope, that's not my field of expertise. Okay. Well, that's why that, that's why I was saying to like, I don't know, not necessarily Everdale, but even like a bigger, a bigger settlement may have more people that would understand, or maybe even people that could that know about the Feywild, because I haven't actually met that many that actually know that much about the Feywild and like traveling between the two planes. Do I know anything about the Feywild? Damn right you do. Just making sure. Damn right you do. And the minute she started speaking about this, your interest is peaked. You are going, this is... You feel a mission coming up in you, do you know <laughs> what I mean? It's like, just these damn crossing over points. The, this is why this world gets flooded with aliens to you, right? Like aliens. People that sh should not be here. And although your new companion seems friendly and you like her, you, you know that she's not of this plane. Because, mm. uh, yeah, my wife... I'm really worried about my wife. She's called Sonnet, by the way. Great. Yeah. Um, I've got a... I had a wife, too. And also, you would have another prejudice. Not necessarily a negative prejudice, but you would definitely have ideas because a tiefling is a sign that at some point, a human, typically a human, did some kind of deal with, again, an extra planar devil. Mm. And it's something about that pact... So again, even though you're very sympathetic to your two new friends, you you are now standing with proof of the very reason you you took the oath that you took. Because here you see somebody who shouldn't be here, an elite, like an illegal immigrant sort of thing, you know? And somebody who is marked by devils messing with people rightfully of this plane. And you can see it starkly in front of you. That's probably what you would think. Now that's like. all interesting. You um, have a wife? Yeah, I do. You do or you... Did you say had or have? Uh, it's, it doesn't... Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I asked. Yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, well, that's more reason we should, you know, get you home to see your wife. So, <laughs> well, okay, okay. Don't forget we... <laughs> Do you need to give these people these images? We can't just go straight back to the Fey, whatever you come from. I mean, I've got no hatred towards the place, but I do want money. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, I mean... Well said, Scarlet. <laughs> I understand that too. I, I'm willing to help um, up until I can get that to my wife. Um, I just... I. I have a feeling it's going to be a while until I'm able to do that because the two ways I can think is try and go back to the forest where I came through which I can't remember where it was and see if it still lets me back or find someone who can either talk to my wife or send me back and pay them to send me back so yeah money probably is a good idea uh, Ron, the whole the whole reason I, I was going north in the first place is to find these rifts. Rifts? Is that what it was? Uh, I believe. Ah, oh, okay. So, what uh, do you do when you find rifts? What would your character do? Um, well, I close them. You close them? Why? What? I mean, 
But about after I go through, right? Oh yeah, if, if, yeah, yeah. That's normally what I do. I put things back in them and then I close them. What if people just like wanted to come through and they was happy and they wasn't lost and they just wanted to come through just to l look at these planes? That's why I close them. To stop people like that from coming through. But what if they... That's a bit mean. Is it not? Maybe slightly, but to me it makes sense. Have you ever wanted to go on holiday? Definitely not. No? Man <laughs> was dedicated to his job. <laughs> yeah. Wait, is this like a hobby for you or is it like... It's not a, it's not a hobby, it's a... It's like an oath, oath to me. Okay. Well, um, I think I can respect that. But I'm not sure about... I'm, I'm meant to watch over this plane and make sure nothing gets in that isn't supposed to be here. But like, did you just like appoint yourself to this or did someone tell you you should go do this? Uh, well... Are you doing this standing still or are we're you no, on? We're, we're, yeah, we're still walking, walking towards the tower. Towards the tower? Yeah. Okay, yeah. towards this room. Okay, good. Well, um... No one in specific appointed me to do this, but so you just decided you don't want. I didn't. It like wasn't much of a decision. It was more of like a, like a. I gotta do this too. <coughs> you know. So where was you originally from then? Oh, I come from. I was born down in. You wouldn't know it. It's off. It's off Aeon. Um, I was born down in a place called. I don't think you understand, uh, you know it, but it's a place called Highgate. And right. Yeah. So I was born there, and uh, I moved because I got a boat because that place is, you know, a bit crowded, and there's a lot of there's a lot of, there's an area that you really don't want to go near um, nearby. Uh, so I left there, got a boat, I landed near Metropole. <laughs> you, know, you, you might you know. Okay. No, you Metropole, might know. Come on. Um, uh, you you recognise Metropole, I think. Did I say that in your backstory? I, I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. It was like that side of the map where I was. Uh, that that's side. right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Metropole. It's like the capital, right? Yeah. Right. The capital. Okay. Yeah. I I got a of of capital of what the uh, continent. The, I don't know how it works. Not the continent. <laughs> it's the capital of like that region down there. Uh, so oh. I came over from Highgate when I was a little kid. Yeah. And then I landed in Metropole, and then just lived there, lived around there for a while. Uh, around Metropole, not in it obviously, because that place is way too, uh, you know, bit too. I don't really like the cities like that. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, went sense. and then I uh, lived around that region for a while and then I started adventuring going north. To close rifts? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty cool. I mean, um, yeah. And so you don't have anywhere that you need to be like urgently because you don't have to be here with us if you need to go. Oh no, you guys, this is the first lead I found in like a month. I haven't. About rifts. So, of like, course. why were you there the other day when we were with Maverick? I was heading north to to find this rift. We I see. Was you, like, specifically looking for my rift, or was you looking for, like, I just don't know if it's your rift, but it seems to be similar. I just got, you know. Yeah, okay. Know where, know where one might be, so I'm just going up. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right, so mm -hmm. Wendell details that he has a clue as to where one might be. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Good. All right, at this stage, after about, I don't know, 45 minutes of chat through the forest and a little bit of backstory update, um, yeah. you come through the, the trees. It's much quieter here. You don't hear the same quantity or number of birds or insects knowing that you are only in this very small couple of mile uh, long bit of forest right in the middle of an ancient battleground. And the forest start to clear out somewhat as you get closer to this rise. And at the top of it, you can see a ruined, dark stoned um, keep. Can I, is it? 
Is it labeled on the map? No. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, on you can see it. Yeah. So it's at this point that you see it on your map. Okay. Oh, that's where we go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that, you yeah. are. Yeah, yeah going to this one here. Yeah. That's where you get to. Okay. Yeah. Um, as you come out of the undergrowth into a, a roughly 200 foot clearing, um, still a few trees here and there, the ground dark and patchy and sulking at the top of this hill is this mostly squat four walled keep with a round tower at each corner of it. Um, the furthermost tower, diagonally across from you, um, is much, much bigger. And whilst it may once have had three, four, who knows how many stories, now it is just the shattered remnants of two stories of this big round tower. Um, the lowermost diagonal corner closest to you is completely crumbled down. Um, creating a kind of an open um, entrance to this to this ruin if you choose to go in. Let's roll for weather. Uh, D20, please. Each of you roll a D20 and tell me your results. Seven, twelve. Six. All right. The temperature is normal for the season and it's the equivalent of the fourth month of the year. Um, there's no wind, there's no rain. It is still. What would you like to do? I think we should go in. I love a good ruin. <laughs> I was actually thinking of heading over to, you know, uh, Darkwood ruins. Oh really? Apparently that's like really dangerous there. Uh huh. <laughs> really dangerous, yes. Like really dangerous. But you know. <laughs> well, now you found us, and we can go to these smaller, more safe ruins. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully they're more safe. Um, yeah, we'll we'll go into the. Uh, the entrance bit well the bit where it's crumbled okay good so as you go in as you head towards the first ruined wall you can see it stretches some 40 feet in both directions that whatever tower would have been in this corner closest to you is completely decimated with large chunks of stone massive blocks of stone each one must weigh two, three tons or more lie scattered around as if some gargantuan titan had just, with a backhand, sent that final tower scattering down the hill. I was going to say, like, it, does it look like natural? Uh, oh, that'll take quite a high DC on nature check, but you can go ahead and roll for me if you'd like. Yeah! 20... 22. 22. All right. Well, with the 22, um, it, it definitely doesn't look like it just fell. Okay. <laughs> it looks like it fell and was like as if something had, you know, something massive had just, just gone like that to a tower and it had like huge stones yeah. from this wall going coming right down the hill. So you passed many of these on the way up to this, this ruin. So to get into the central courtyard of this of this keep requires negotiating quite a few boulders mm -hmm. to get in. It's not just a clear walk in. So in order to attempt that, I'd like you to each pick two of your skills, your proficiencies mm -hmm. that you want to use to to kind of get over these rocks and boulders. Uh, can I use athletics? Yeah. Um, <laughs> can I use athletics too? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's individual skill check. I'll athletics. just use athletics and acrobatics. I'll use athletics um, and perception. I'll use acrobatics and performance. <laughs> performance. Well, tell me how you're going to use performance isn't to get performance in. Performance, like how good you can do at like sports and. Oh no, no. Like no. So Olympics. performance would be like if you wanted to sing oh, or if okay, you wanted okay. to do some kind of display. Right. Well, I don't have any athletics. Or act. So oh, I do acrobatics. You could do um like you could use um 
Yeah, you might have to use some that you're not as high in, but you could use. You like, can use. You can use a skill that you do not have proficiency with. You could use insight to like tell which bits. Are, That'd be investigation. That, oh, investigation. To like see where to climb. Yeah, I'll do that then. Okay, I'll do cool. Next so next. let's start with you. Make your two rolls, please, as you begin the climb over these boulders. Athletics is a 23. Okay. You easily are able to oomph, hop up and start to climb over these rocks. Um, what's your other skill you're using? Perception. Perception to notice the best. 19. 19. You easily, it takes you maybe a couple of minutes just to oomph, pull yourself up. Over you go, flipping over, and then you flip down into this courtyard. Rowan. Uh, okay, uh, athletics. Oh, seven. All right, takes you a lot longer. <laughs> um, you're still a little woozy, still a little kind of tripping out, a little yeah. bit disjointed from the world, yeah. but it takes you a bit longer, okay. like I'd say a good five, ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and acrobatics. Okay, 21. All right, but you are, you, you land well on the other side. <laughs> yeah. Let's put it that way. And Scarlet, go ahead and roll your acrobatics yes. first. 22. Okay, you easily kind of like just spring up, grab one with one hand and uh, pull yourself up, doing a backflip up onto the top of the wall. <laughs> Show off. And what's your other skill you're using? Um, it was... Investigation. Yeah, um, and that's 13. 13. So with your, combined with your acrobatics, you're able to find the perfect footholds as you... and land. <laughs> down into the courtyard. And just gone, wait for me. This courtyard, I mean, you all did that simultaneously. It's not like you're waiting for each other, but you get me. Uh, 20, 30, 40, 50. Um, roughly 50 foot across. So you're in the bottom right um, diagonal, if you think of the of the keep, you're in the bottom right. You've come in yeah. there and that one's completely ruined. You've gotten over all the, the, the boulders and the debris into this huge courtyard. Diagonally across from you is the massive round tower. Mm -hmm. Each of the towers that are still stand, and there's three of them, the one on your right and the one on your left, so bottom left and top right, are still standing, unruined. I mean, they're old. It seems unoccupied. There is moss and ivy clinging and growing everywhere. Um, but they are standing. Directly across from you is the massive round tower, some 50, 60 foot in diameter, Linking the three are these thick keep walls. At the top of them, you've got the classic um, battlements and walkways. Um, and likewise, you can go underneath those walkways to have shelter from above. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Um, those walls are some 30, 40 feet high, you estimate. Directly ahead of you, the massive tower the whole front of it facing you has blasted out, completely blasted out. Um, and two huge double doors lie slightly overlapping in front of you. The entrance to that tower, therefore, is probably blasted out about 25 feet wide hole um, that exposes two stories. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Oh, dang. Such that if you wanted to, you could, if you used your acrobatics as you so wanted to, you could, by walking straight ahead, go straight up onto the second Perfect, floor if yeah. you climbed well. Or you could go into the pitch darkness almost of the, of the bottom floor. Your call. Um, there is still some stones and boulders and debris and everything in this courtyard. Um, and what might have one day in the past been the remnants, you see a lot of timber. Almost as if this might once have been, um, had a roof. The roof wouldn't have been stone, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So there is, a, there is some remnants of rotting timber all about as well. Okay. Long beams. Um, that's a, the general without a perception check. That's what you see. Yeah. What would you like to do? Um, as it is in the courtyard, we're in the courtyard, right? Sure. Uh, can I look around and see if there's anything of note in here other than obviously fallen stuff? Yeah, go on. Go ahead and roll a perception check. Okay. Um, 21. Not that you see. Okay. But that you hear. Oh. And at first you think, is it is it the sound of the wind through the, the arrow slits in the walls? 
heading to the left or heading to the right of you? Or is it... But then you're like, no, that's not the sound of like a woo. It's, um, it's almost like a barking. Okay. Do now and then you hear like a... Yeah, like a... Dis yeah. You hear it again, like a distant barking. Is it from... Just but like a hooting type of bark. Okay. Is it does it is it coming from outside of the hmm. keep or Well with a twenty one, you listen. Close your eyes. It seems to be coming out of the tower straight ahead. Uh oh. But it's distant. Yeah. Like you're hearing something way off. I think there's something in that tower. Oh, I hear it barking. Like a Grey dog that got it. Maybe, yeah, maybe it is. Um, so I don't see anything like physical out in the courtyard. Oh, there's plenty of stuff and debris, but nothing of uh, note. Yeah. Nothing that you go, that makes you go, this is out of place. Okay. There's some bits of wrought iron, um, sconces, maybe once that were up on the walls that have now long fallen. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff. Nothing of any note. Okay. Um, we what do you want to do? Tower, guys? Yeah, go in. Yeah, I think we should Straight start ahead? at the ground level anyway. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm you light a torch just in case it's dark. Okay, you light the torch. It definitely is dark. Straight ahead. <clears throat> you light a torch and you start to walk towards the the main tower. Um, almost acting as natural ramps, the double doors allow you to walk up to the the lip of the entrance to the key um, and so as you walk up these enormous but fast rotting these have obviously been lying here for a long time um, but enormous double doors lying overlapped and as you walk up to them and use them as a natural gangplanks up to the to the entrance into the lip you hear movement underneath them Underneath the doors. Underneath the doors. They lie, remember, like gangplanks? Yeah. Leading up. Oh, like okay. they they once were on the thing and they just fell off yeah. like that. So they are at an angle. And underneath them you hear... Oh. Like this kind of chittering sound from um, underneath them. Hmm. Hang on, guys. Can I... So, um, because they're like gangplanks, there's a space underneath them. Yes. Can I, like, clean down and look under them? Um, hang, of course hang, you can. Hang, okay, hang on two seconds. So you go ahead and you lean down underneath. <laughs> and underneath, best I can describe is you see this chitinous, insectoid, gigantic, oh. well, large face. Yeah. Kind of like curling, like uncurling from <laughs> underneath. <laughs> Unintelligent. Oh my God. And it... I'm going to go back up. Heads towards you. Ah. I'd like everyone to roll initiative, please. Ooh, I rolled really good for these. 22. 10. 15. 22? Me. No, she... 22? Yeah. Okay. Ryan, what did you roll? 15. Okay, nice. Scarlet. All right, so these two massive, almost like centipede, but large, like they're enormous. And they have these massive yellowing plates of, of armour on them, you know, like the, this natural armour. Um, and out of the front of their faces, as it uncurls, these long <laughs> tentacles come out from the front of their face as they unravel at the set scent of fresh meat. Two of these creatures unravel from underneath these doors and come out from either side of them. So one comes out to the left, one comes out to the right. You also hear that barking as well. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, massive bug-like eyes, uh, a central mouth of round rows of teeth and around it, these whiplash-like slimy tentacles Whipping away. Let me just put on some battle music for this. Yippee. You all know these. There are songs at bedtime sung to you by everyone's parents about how to ignore the, and how to steer clear of the carrion crawlers yeah, okay. and how the carrion crawlers, uh, if you don't clean your house, the <laughs> carrion crawlers will come in. 
two of them now unravel ahead of you. So, Rowan, <laughs> as you lean over yeah. the, uh, on the incline of this door, you see this huge thing come out in front of you and literally rear up and unwind. Um, its underbelly is sort of less, is more silky and white and sickly and is clinging to it. It's all manner of just rotten stuff and things. And its tail ends in this deadly barbed pincer. Um, the tentacles out in front of it coming towards uh, natural food that it wants to eat. Uh, you're top of the round. What do you want to do? Okay, I'm going to shoot it. Go on, Em. I got a natural one. Oh. What does that oh mean? God, <laughs> it doesn't. It What's you that? Have to, you have to fix it. No, it? a misfire is that it, it, it jams. It jams. Yeah, yeah, it jams. It jams. It it. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You... Too many, Dang too it. many, too many like uh, playing around when you were high. <laughs> <laughs> so you realise, uh, we'll say that actually, you just forgot to load it. <laughs> so you can pull it out. Oh no. Uh, and you... yeah. So it'll take a round to load it, okay? Yeah. okay. This time, because it needs full loading. All right. Uh, bonus action. Oh, uh, how close? It's within five feet. Ah, it comes okay. right out. Yeah, no, I'm going to face step. Here. Go on then. <laughs> Just sports. <In> sports. <laughs> <clears throat> and then you. <clears throat> and come autumn out leaves. Here. Okay, yeah, and autumn leaves. <laughs> Good. End of your go? Yeah. Great. Okay, it's the carrying crawlers go. Oh. Seeing you <laughs> vanish but not having any intelligence, it just, this one sniffs out the closest target to it uh -oh. and heads towards Scarlet. So it. <laughs> it go, going along the floor like an enormous giant centipede comes towards you. But with its tentacles lashing, 5, 10, 15, 20, comes right up to you. Um, and it's going to do a multiple tentacle attack on you and a bite. Oh, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a 10 to hit. How do I hit? So yeah, your armor right. class. Okay, 15. So no. Okay, so the first tentacle, you use your acrobatics to get out of the way as one of these tentacles whips towards you. Uh, this, another one comes your way. Natural four, that's also a miss. You manage using your high dexterity to dodge the tentacles, and then a bite comes in. That's a 20 to hit, so that hits you. Uh, reaction, Vigilant Guardian. I'm gonna swap places with her and take the hit instead. What, how hey! even would that work? Uh, just uh, just see her get hit by, what is it? The, the Attack. No, the tentacles oh. miss, but the uh, bite comes in. Oh, the bite, and then I just and just trade places. Literally, you swap. Yeah, and I get hit by this. So <laughs> this divine light comes down insta almost instantaneously. Like you know, like when somebody dies in Resident Evil, there's that beam of light that comes yeah. out of their body. Yeah. But imagine that massive, yeah. and it just goes like that, and they you swap. So you take the bat as you. Materializing radiant light, you take the hit. So you take 2d4 piercing damage. Here it comes. You notice the uh, these the, the the mouth was coming right for you, would have been a definite hit, and then suddenly you're you're across the way. All right, you take uh, five piercing damage. Okay, um, that's the end of that. Unfortunately, that's the end of that carrying crawler's go. <laughs> it's now this carrying crawler's go. <laughs> no. It's on to it again. <laughs> it just, just goes for you again. And you missed two tentacle attacks. Let's hope these... <laughs> that might not have been as nice as you thought. <laughs> you know... <laughs> just take more damage. Okay, one tentacle whips whips you for a 26 to oh, hit. So that no, definitely... I was being mean. I wasn't, I wasn't doing that as a nice thing. Yeah. Like okay, you take five points of poison damage. As one of these tentacles like <laughs> sticks to your skin and then ah, he's, it just stings, it just burns. And I'd like you to roll a constitution saving throw. So roll d20, compare it to your constitution. Is it your box? Oh, just give me the 19. number. 19, okay. Um, <laughs> all right, the, you <laughs> manage to kind of like rip it off before the poison seeps too much into your body. And you, you feel that, like, there is a freezing, cold, paralytic 
um, nature to the poison that you just avoid so you are not paralyzed. All right, um, so that was, was that the first tentacle? All right, here comes the second tentacle. Again, natural 18 <laughs> for a 26 to hit. So this one hits you as well. You take another, oh my God. You take another three hit points of poison damage. Okay. Hey, I never said I was a And I want, another, <laughs> I want another constitution saving throw, please. <laughs> You're trying to help. That's one of those, hey, I was trying to help. Uh, the five, no wait. Six. Oh <laughs> shit! All right, the you are now. Oh god! Oh no! All right, yeah, okay. So this poison, this one wraps around your neck, and ah, you feel the poison seep into you, and you go rigid. You are paralyzed oh, you, by this creature. This is how they hunt their prey and eat on fresh carrion. Oh no! Um, and now it comes in, knowing you are now rigid. It comes in, it's dripping more, going for a bite. Natural 19. Yes, sir. Okay, you take a further five points of piercing damage as it starts to basically eat you alive. Oh. Don't worry, it was only my reaction to this. Oh. All right, Wendell, it's your go. As you and take the bite. You look <laughs> across and you see oh. Scarlet like getting whipped and going rigid. What are you going to do? It's your go. Oh, uh, okay. Um. <laughs> okay. Let me see. There's many things I can do. Okay, I'm going to move away 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah. Here. Okay, opportunity, opportunity attack from the uh, carrying crawler. That's a uh, 17 to hit. Uh, no. Okay, great. And I've got to do... Can I do lay on hands to cure the poison? You can use five. Does it do that? Your person... Yeah, I can use five yeah, to remember five. Cure. To cure poison? Poison And around. disease? Yeah. Cool. All right, yeah, take off you five. You regain... No, you don't. No, uh, you're just... Un you feel this warmth spread through I'll you. Give, I'll give you... Ten, you regain five hit points and you're cured of your... Okay, Cool. You. you are healed and <gasps> suddenly your body uh, frees up and you can move again. That's your action. Bonus action? Bonus action. And you've used... I'll cast... 25 feet of your movement. I'll cast... Searing Smite. Bonus action, yeah? Yeah. Will that come into effect on your next turn then? Yeah. All right, great. And you say a quick prayer as you uh, summon the Searing Smite. All right, that's Wendell's go. Scarlet, you're up. What do you want to do? Freed of your paralysis. Ho, ho, ho. Um, I think I'll just, for now, just firebolt this All one. right, this one? Yeah. Okay, the one that did bite you the first time. All right, you turn around and just across the way. Uh, make an attack roll then with your d20. Um, is there anything I add to your spell yeah, attack? Spell. Oh yeah, okay. Um, 24. Definitely is. Alright, 2d10 damage then. You'll get it. Hang on, you get it. Yep. Can I just roll this two times? Yeah. Um, 8. 8 total? Yeah. Nice, okay. You turn around coming down your arms like these rivulets of, of golden fire and then you channel it and hadouken this thing across the way um, the first bit of damage to any of these a nice one as it splashes across it a lot of its carapace protects it so it doesn't seem too hurt by it but nice one first bit of damage top of the round Rowan you're up Oh, I'm going to jump into my gun. Okay, you just get the rod and boom, get the bullet down there. Rod back on your belt. Nice. It'll be ready next round. Bonus yeah. action. Uh, Bearing in mind you're new. Yeah, uh, I don't have anything for bonus action. Okay. Any movement? Uh, um, no, I'm going to stay there. All right, cool. Uh, carrying crawlers, go. What? I was actually going to move back a little bit. Go on then. Okay. 
What's this again? Rubble. Okay. And uh, that's a wall. Okay. <coughs> okay, this one is going to... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, you're going to get two tentacles and a bite. Tentacle one does, yeah, that's a hit. 26 to hit. Uh -huh. Second one, um, miss, 12 to hit. Yeah, okay. And then the bite, um, 17? Uh, no. Oh, okay, cool. Tentacle comes then. You take um, four points of poison damage. Mm -hmm. And give me a constitution saving throw. I will. <clears throat> Can I have that back? <laughs> uh, con save is a 13. That's what you needed. Oh, thank God. <clears throat> so you avoid the paralysis. And then the other one is going to continue to go for you. Now that... Uh, opportunity attack, I have the sentinel feet. If anyone attacks her while she's within five feet of me, I can opportunity attack. Do you not have to be, um... No, I, no? If, if someone attacks anyone within five feet of me, I can opportunity. Alright, take your attack then. Uh, arm blade. <clears throat> 24 to hit. Yep. And that's uh, nine points of slashing damage. Nice, alright. As you see it going for her, you just lean across and smack it, doing some damage. Uh, the first tentacle is a... And its speed is zero now. Oh, cool. Um, you don't have to be flanking for that to work. Okay, that's that's powerful. All right, 17 to hit. So that hits. First tentacle comes and does um, three points of poison damage. And give me the constitution saving throw again to see if you're paralyzed. <clears throat> hey, good. Oh, um, 22. 22? Yeah. 24, is it not? Oh, oh yeah. Sorry. Great. Okay, you're fine. You fight off the paralysis. The second tentacle comes. This one hits as well. And you take another four points of poison damage. Um, and I need another constitution save. Oh, ten. And you, the paralysis takes you, <laughs> you as it comes in for a bite. Uh, the bite hits. So you take... Oh, man, you are not... <laughs> very well. Uh, seven points of piercing damage. <clears throat> all right that's the carrying crawlers oh no and then uh have i done both of them one attack to wendell and one yeah one attack me. me one attack you yeah cool great uh carrying crawlers go wendell you're up what are you doing okay uh, these things are like literally they're flanking you <laughs> <laughs> uh arm blade on this guy go for it so okay that's 25 Definitely hits. Uh, Searing Smite. It takes... Well, I just roll my Arm Blade attack damage first. Oh. That's five points of slashing damage from yep. Arm Blade. The Searing Smite. It takes... Paladin's well of damage. It yes. takes four points of fire damage. <laughs> and it's ignited. And it'll take... Um, it, at the end of each... <coughs> at, the, and at the end of each of its goes, it has to make a con save or take... Uh, 1d6 fire damage again. Nice. Alright, so that's your... And, hang on, I'm not done yet. Uh, divine Smite. Hey! Oh, yeah, wait, have you... No, you haven't used your brain function. Yeah, that's still haven't used my bonus action. Uh, takes 15 points of radiant damage. What? Can oh, I okay. be surprised? Hang on, to bonus, bonus action. Uh... Hmm. You used your bonus action. It's Divine Smite bonus action. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Alright. This no, thing... No, it's not. Yeah, it's a when bonus you, action. When you hit a creature, you can expend one spell slot. Yeah, no, it's not bonus action. It's a spell slot. Okay, what's your bonus action? Bonus action. Uh, do I actually have a bonus action? Let's do... It costs a cantrip. You're right. Uh, the paladins know can cantrips? Well, I do. <coughs> Let's... I thought the bonus action... I don't have a bonus action, so I'll just... All right, fine. Um, nice. This one here is looking real rough. 
burning. It's got scorch marks from divine energy, radiant energy uh, across it. So it's not looking, I mean, it's still got fight in it. It's not looking good. And it's thrashing around, flailing its its tentacles with, with rage. Um, that's the end of w Wendell's go. Scarlet, your go, you are paralyzed for this guy, I'm afraid. Yeah. So I want you to roll another constitution saving throw. This is whether you'll be freed next time. No, right? I'm not being freed. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Still, this thing, and you kind of like literally go <laughs> over on the ground as you're, well, actually, you'd just be frozen in position, so you don't fall over. But you are rigid as you as this tentacle still wraps tighter around you. It's gross. Top of the round, Rowan. What you doing? You I'm see all this happen. Shoot that guy. You're going to hit me, but it's... No, no, it's right. Get closer. No. Uh, five, uh, more than five feet. That is 24 to hit. Yes. I'm going to do uh, violent, is it violent? Damaging attack. Um, I'm going to use a grip point to do violent shot. Go ahead. Okay. Give uh, me some damage. Wait. Okay. Uh, okay. Just roll on your feet. Uh, okay, wait. Uh, 11, 16. 16 points piercing damage. 16. Let me guess. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. What else happens as a result of violent shot? No, it just took more damage. Oh, okay. You <laughs> ripping off a bunch of its tentacles uh, with this one shot that just blasts straight through its its head. Oh, sorry. Hang on. Um, add four more to that damage. <laughs> okay. It's looking real. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's your action. Uh, yeah. bonus. I don't know how many good bonus. Oh, actually, yeah. Okay. Come on, man. I'm going to be like. Wait, let me see. Okay, now your hit points are fine. Um, don't worry, no. I'm not doing my hit points are six. Wait, no, wait. Yeah, I'm on six. I'm oh, okay. Don't tell us. I'm like, uh, oh, no. Scarlet. Oh, no. I'll reach out. Mm. And, um, kind of like a surge of. Spores will float over to her and nice. surround her face and probably go to where her wounds are. And uh, I'll cast Healing Word. Healing Word. What's the range on Healing Word? 60 feet. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. Okay. Right. Um, okay. 1d4. You see Scarlet, as this happens, you see Scarlet rigid and this thing now like trying to almost wrap it up so you can just devour her alive uh -oh. and you like Scarlet yeah. and these spores float across that are glowing ever so slightly yeah. and they pack into your wounds. Okay, you get uh six. <laughs> six hit points back, nice. Okay. Better than nothing. Yeah, thank you. Good work. Alright. Any or go? Yeah. You wanna use any movement? Are you happy uh, where you are? I'm good there. Okay, cool. Um it's the carrying crawlers go. With that, this one hurt by you and attention taken, it five, ten, uh, fifteen. Uh, 20, uh, opportunity attack, please. It's not right next to you. It's more than it's it was more than five feet away from you. It was there. I, I was able to right, go take the attack then. Go. So okay. 15, 20, 20, 20. Uh, hang on. I was saying this before it moves because when I hit creatures with opportunity go on, attacks, then. their speed becomes zero. So anyway, uh ten. <laughs> Oh, 10 misses, unfortunately. Okay, so well, it, it skitters along the ground and comes over to you. It's going to give you double tentacles and a bite. Okay. That is, okay, uh, 14 to hit. Miss. 25 to hit. hit. All right. You take uh, three points of poison damage. Okay. And I want a constitution saving throw, please. Okay. Uh, 15. Yep, you're fine. You've managed to shrug off the shrug off the paralysis. The the bite hits you with a twenty one to hit. Yeah. And you take eight points of piercing damage. Okay. All right, then this one is gonna. It's actually you're already paralyzed, so it goes for paralysis attacks on you. Okay. Um, and just a bite on you. So paralysis. Oh. Uh, 14 to hit. Uh, nope, nope. And 25 to hit. Yeah. Give me a con save. Oh, firstly, take 
Three points of poison damage, and then a con save, please. It'd be great if you were all paralyzed. No. Uh, 14, I'm fine. 14, fine. All right. Um, Wait, I'm not paralyzed, am I? And then it goes to, but no, you're not. And then it goes to bite you. Ah, it actually misses with a seven to hit. Uh, hang on, paralyzed. Automatically fails strength and dex. Attack rolls against it have the advantage. Hang on, natural 20, it does bite Shit, you. What the hell? Sorry, I'm That's sorry, it says damage. if you're paralyzed, you get advantage. Oh no. Four, five, six, seven, doubled 14. You know? 18 hit points I'm damage. dead. No, you're not, you're not dead. You're at zero. You're unconscious, you're unconscious. So oh. you, you go unconscious. Okay. Are you trying to do anything? Uh, this isn't this isn't a healing thing, but it's still cool. I would like to um, do. Do I want to do that? Hang on. Is it a reaction you're talking about? Yeah. Let's have it. Okay. Uh, I. No, don't worry. Actually. Okay. So you take a, na- a massive bite. This thing just has you wrapped up and just like, and you just see it take a massive chunk into that. And the pain, you see Scarlet's <laughs> eyes r- roll back in her head and she just goes unconscious as this thing just keeps gnawing on her. Um, okay. <clears throat> um, okay. That's the carrion crawlers go. Wendell, you're up. What are you doing? Uh... Lay on hands, you're back to 10 hit points. Okay, thank you. Uh, literally, you go from that to <laughs> as the radiant light seeps through. And that's your action? Yeah, bonus action. Let's do something cool. Oh. This one's in pretty good shape, by the way. Hooray. Cool. <laughs> Myself. What does that do? Gives me a plus two to AC. Nice. Okay. Is that a cantrip? No. It's bonus action, isn't it? You use lay on hands for action. That's not a spell. Oh, cool. Okay, fine. Okay. Um, end of your go? Are you using any movement? Are you staying where you are? I'm staying where I am. Cool, cool, cool. Scarlet, you're up. You're healed. You are... Still paralyzed? She died, so she yeah, it's true. Yeah, so. that ended it. Yeah. You went unconscious. Hang on. Yeah. Slow. Great, you're up. What you doing? Um, can I move move my character? Of course you can. Go ahead. Each square is five feet. You've got thirty feet of uh, movement. If you move away from someone, they can hit you as a uh, reaction. Yeah. They get one attack against you. Uh, okay. You can, you can risk it if you like. I mainly want Wendell to move. Actually, no, I don't. Hang on. Yeah, it's well, how do I know you can what use Why do you want me to move? You can use your I want to use. I'm protecting you. Hang on, hang on. You let, can talk, let, 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 let talk. What how are you do thinking? I do a bonus? Like, what, how do I know what is a bonus and what is like normal? So, most spells are an action. Some spells it'll say um, bonus action. So. One says one reaction and one action. Some of them say one action. Yeah. So an action is, that's your action. Yeah. It'll say in casting time if it's a bonus action. So unless you have any spells that are bonus action. So what does reaction mean? Reaction is you use it in, so that's what um, Wendell did uh, earlier, is he did something in reaction. Um, so you get hit, my reaction was to swap places with you. Okay. Which it wasn't like... A reaction you could do not on your turn. That's the way to think of a reaction. Okay. So if if on my go as a carrying crawler's go, if I cast a spell, <laughs> you could... Um, what's a reaction? Counter, counter, counter spell's a reaction, isn't it? Yeah. So even on my go, you can go counter spell. So reaction means you can butt in and do something not on your go. Okay. 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 But also as a thing, you can use your action to disengage, which means you won't take uh, mm. an opportunity. Okay. Well, for now, I'm just going to do another fireball on that guy. Cool. 
Roll your d20, add six. That's your spell oh, attack. Okay. Uh, 24. Nice, that definitely hits. Give me 2d10 damage. Yes. Oh, four. <laughs> four total? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I forgot. Um, That thing I'm needs here. to make a constant <coughs> saving throw. Please. Or... Didn't it take fire damage from the series? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um... Uh, 12. Yeah, no, it takes four points of fire damage. It's still on fire until it uses an action to put itself out. Which one? This one? That one. That one, okay, cool. Needs to use an action to do that? To put it somewhere. <laughs> All right. Four damage, did you say? Yeah, four fire. Four fire. All right. So it's not only still burning, but it gets an extra shot of burning to the face from Scarlet, um, who is back on her feet and conscious and not paralyzed. Top of the round. Rowan, you're up. One. That's point blank. So disadvantage. Disadvantage. Okay, I'm going to switch to my long sword then. Okay. Long sword? Short sword. Cool. Okay. Um, you holster and yeah. with almost the same movement. 18? Yeah, that definitely okay. is. Short sword. It's a short sword. Um, keep thinking of it in there. Um, eight. Slashing. How do you want to do it? Yes! I'll just like... Um, I slash open like through the like chin kind of stuff they have and um, yeah. Slash it. Ah, right, wrench it open and <laughs> all this green goo just starts to come out as this thing like shudders and shivers <laughs> and like kind of goes all rigid as it shakes and then just <laughs> is on the ground like um like when a worm gets cut in half uh, and it still wriggles. Yeah. It does that in front of you for quite Yay. a while. It's out. All right, good. Um, you've still got your movement left and a bonus action if you want it. Okay, um, okay, 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 hang on. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, uh, do Thorn Whip on this guy. So I've just seen that I was like, whoa, I could do that with spores. And then I just try and hold my hand out again because I did it before. And I'm not really sure what's going to come from it. But I... Uh, vines. How about from the ground? Since there is moss and stuff overgrown in here, like, as you put your hand out, <laughs> up from the ground, like, coalescing from all the nature around you, like, this... Like, just comes yeah. up into your hand and you've got this... This whip. What's oh, the range on the whip? Uh, oh, oh. Is it bonus action? Yeah. Uh, no. No, it's not. You use your action. Okay, uh, instead I'm going to use healing <laughs> word again. Who on? Uh, on Scarlet? Yeah, Scarlet. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> nice idea. <laughs> yeah. You that. kind of see that. In <laughs> <your head. laughs> uh, you get eight. Thank you. Nice. More, more like you're getting spores, you're like, get out! Oh, actually, no, it's okay. Yeah. It's all right, keep it coming. Stop blowing shit in my face. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. And you'll go? Uh, yeah. All right, it's the final remaining carrying crawlers go. Um, first tentacle, one to three you, four to six you it goes for. So the first tentacle whips out but at you. Can I do a reaction now? Yes. Can I do a shield? Yes, you can. Nice work. So, read what shield does to your armor class. Just read it out to An me. An invisible barrier of magical force appears and protects you until the start of your next turn. You have a plus five bonus to AC, including against the triggering attack. So you, you will take no damage from magic missile. That's awesome. So it adds how much to your AC? Five. 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 So 20 AC? Yeah. Hang on. Plus... <laughs> plus eight. Nineteen. Yippee! So literally, it goes whoosh, like whips out at you, and you just drop like in an instant, and whoosh, this glowing barrier comes up, and it whoosh, whoosh, like retracts its tentacle off as it misses you. Second tentacle is going to go for you again. Oh. <laughs> Wait, um, does she still have yep. shield up? Yeah, yeah, she still has shield. Does it? It's the end of her next go. All right, nice. Uh, by that, eleven doesn't even, doesn't hit you at all. Again. <laughs> Kind of like reflects off of, of shield. Nice. Good use of reactions. Nice one. 
Um, and then the bite is going to go for you again, I'm afraid. Sorry. Oh I'm just rolling. It's the dice, man. It's not me. I'm on your side. The monsters aren't on your side. Um, all right. The bite does uh, 20 to hit with shield. That just gets through the shield. Opportunity attack, please, after. Okay. So the bite kind of it's it, it hurt, but it goes through. Um, you take uh, f- uh, five points of piercing damage. Okay. Uh, 21 to hit. Yeah, that definitely hits. Uh, eight points of slashing damage. Nice, okay. All right, that's the carrion crawler's go. Hmm. Could try and spider climb the hell out it's of here. It's speed zero. I hate Sentinel already. I know my DMs hate Sentinel. I hate Sentinel. Uh, <laughs> okay. Wendell's go. Uh, okay. Let's just chill there, actually. Um, just gonna... Paladins, man. Uh, I thought I'd I... have a campaign break from you. I'll just, I'll just retract my arm blade and take out my greatsword. I'll put my shield away, I guess. Alright. That's a lot. Yeah, it's, not, it's not just one swift move. Yeah, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> wait, wait. Okay, let's go. And I'm going to make an attack against it. Alright. I will say, because you're doing, you said arm blade away, sword out. I'm or sure. that, I'll say that's your bonus action used for that. Alright. Uh, that's uh, 14 to hit. Yep, that hits. Nice. 11 points of slashing damage. Ah, oh, that hurts it. It's looking hurt now. Okay, then. Divine Smite. Okay. More radiant <laughs> energy. Nine points out. of radiant you What? Can't, you can't do that indefinitely. Divine Smite. Yeah, it's a spell slot. I know. Okay. <laughs> nice being on his side there. Good. No, actually, he needs some rules lawyering back out. Actually. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's good. Actually, <laughs> um, eyes closed around that. Actually, <laughs> <to remember. laughs> all right, this thing's now looking hurt. That radiant, like, <clears throat> that comes off of it, like, kind of like blasts it. That hurt it. So, um, is that the end of your go? Uh, yeah, you want to stay where you are? Yeah, Scarlet, you're up. Yay! Um, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. Is he still like 15 feet, or is how much space does this actually take up? Is he just five feet away from me, or is right he like, like he's right next okay. to you? So, if when it says all creatures, it includes him, doesn't it? Includes me, yeah. Um, well, what's you thinking? Have you? I, I can take it again. You can take you thinking you what? track of your own spells. Oh, burning hands is target, so it won't hit him by okay. accident. Yeah, I'll do that. Then. Burning hands, cool. Um, can you read out whether it's saving throw or attack roll? What does it say? Where does it say that? Or just read the description. Oh, no. Does it say, like, the target must make a saving throw? Um, it says you must make a dexterity Cool. Thing. So you have to tell me that, because I've got to make the okay. monster see whether it dodges that. Uh, 13 spell sa- So then I'll tell you a number, and you've got a spell save DC. Easy. <laughs> what is your spell save DC? 14. All right, cool. Well, I rolled 13, so... Um, I do not dodge this, so roll me some damage. Um, Why are you rolling d20? Oh, sorry. Which one? It'll, it'll <laughs> say the damage in the on the spell. Oh wait, no. No, let figure out. Let figure out. Sorry. Three d six. Cool. Ooh, that was good. Sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. How do you want to do yeah. this? Just aim and shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not a gun. <laughs> but you... she said, it says that she holds her hands with her thumbs tucked up. Oh, wait, okay, and um, like this, like a girl yeah. on the watch. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> Literally, a gout of like inferno like hell's fire comes out. <laughs> Fireball is like you fling it at something, right? And it's like, <laughs> like burning hands. You, everything just <laughs> erupts from it. Just a channel of like absolute intense scorching heat and this thing you can hear it like gives off this screeing sound this high pitched almost subsonic like as it rides around and its tentacles that also start to catch fire till you've got these writhing flaming tentacles and it goes rigid and then falls over still burning crackling well done 
It is still burning from my... Good fight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. These two creatures lie smoking and dead. Thank you, battle music. That's quite enough of you. Uh, sorry, Scar, but I didn't. I didn't realize what I was doing there. <laughs> yep. Again. <laughs> I'll, I'll come back over to you. Guys. I'd like to do harness divine power to regain one of my expended spell slots. Okay. Can you tell me this ability? Um, Are you all right? Did you get as a bonus board? action? <laughs> yes, I did. You regain an expended spell slot. If you use a channel divinity. Uh, Can it only be done during combat, though, if it's a bonus action? It's just, you do it, kind of. It's just, you can cast bonus action, action spells out of combat, I assume. It's just a challenge sure. divinity. Okay, great. <clears throat> Alright. So, ahead of you... Um, well, this is the scene. You have two corpses. You've got these doors, upright from which these two carrion crawlers have just recently come. Uh, an open, black opening to the keep. Um, and you're on this kind of gangplank from which these creatures just came. What do you feel like doing? All right, well, uh, that was... Uh... Carrion crawlers, I know, right? Yeah. Easier when you've got about... The bane of people. many adventurers. Should we, uh, are we good to head inside then? Yeah. Can I listen and see if I still hear that barking sound? Uh, give me a perception check. I'd like perception checks from everyone, by the way. Eight. Nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah. Uh, Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Um... You both see, you catch a momentary glimmer, a glint, a reflection, coming from where the overlap of the two doors, through the rotting panels, you see a glint underneath from where these creatures came from. Funny. Oh. I'm good. What do you want to do? Can I go over um, can we have a look at it? Okay, you hop down. <laughs> Remember, when they're, they're kind of up against the wall, there's a good five, six feet mm. of, of, of space underneath yeah. here. Um, you see the mini horde mm. of these carrying crawlers. Nice. So, um, since you both saw them first, <laughs> you get first dibs on this. Um, <laughs> starting with you, Scarlet, I'd like you to go ahead and roll the percentage dice, please. Which one is Which are the 2d10. So one of them will look like that, 20, 80, and one of them will just be the single number one. Okay. So you roll them together and you get a number between... Okay. One and a hundred. Forty-three. Forty-three. All right. Let's do a little Our bit first of treasure. Horde. Yeah, this is your first official hoard, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Let's see if we can make it good. Then. <laughs> Forty-three. Yeah. Did you say? Yeah. Ah, huh, cool. Okay. The first thing that you find is. As you go under there into the dark, your dark vision really, really helps you. Um, and I'll say, because you've got dark vision and you haven't, you get to roll twice here before your wants roll, okay? Just, um, so the first thing you find is a really small little glass bottle. And inside of it, there's this yellow liquid that almost pulses. And you realize the glint you saw from up on the doors was this not gold and so it, it kind of pulses with this glowing liquid so write that down it's some some form you know of potion you're not sure what kind of potion it is these things don't tend to have them written on them but you can like find you can find sages or local arcana scholars or even a wizard who might be able to to do it for a fee and tell you exactly what it is that you've got oh roll percentage dice again 85 85. Cool. You see, how would this look? I'm trying to think how to describe this. Okay. 
I think the I think these things will probably take the form of something that is pleasing to the potential user. So you see, like, you know when um, sometimes you see, uh, oh God, how to describe it, where you wear a handkerchief. Yeah, like a. Uh, what do you call that? That's like a. Uh, what do you call that? <laughs> right here. Yeah, like the, I wear them, like a. Hair, what is that? A hair veil. A hair veil. Yeah, I know what you mean. So like, you find one of them, and it's in like decorative red silk um, with gold embroidery, but it is kind of tied so that it is something you put on your head. Okay. It's dirty and mossy, but when you pull it out, give me an arcana check. As a sorcerer, you've probably... Is that a 20? Yep, check. Yeah. Check as well. 15. 15. You're not sure what it is, but you definitely know magic when you touch it. This is magical. Oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> Can I put that on, like... Yeah, write it down in your inventory somewhere. Write down magical... Call it a magical cap, because it, it, it is a kind of a cap. All right. <laughs> Wendell, uh, go ahead and roll percentage dice, please. And... Two. Two. Nice. You are no stranger to healing potions. Good. And you find. Uh, give me the, the potion thing. Well, that, that's handy, but. Uh, mm-hmm. Two. You got yourself. Potion of superior Yay. healing. Oh, nice. That's a three. All right. Uh, are you going down to have a little look around as well? All right, Get last of the thing. Give me a, per- a percentage. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, 22. 22. Ooh. Now, you spot this because probably you recently found something similar. Okay. Although this one is decorated differently. It looks much, much older. Yeah. But in a in a brown, crackled brown, like hardened brown leather tube, mm-hmm. you that is uncapped. This one, yeah. Um, you see tightly rolled within okay. it some parchment. Okay. Nice. Jesus. Okay. okay. <laughs> What do you want to do with this stuff? I'm you want to take to... a break to uh, to examine them and try and figure I'm it out? I sure. cast Detect Magic. You cast Detect Magic? Yeah. All right. So as you cast Detect Magic, the familiar buzzing and glow from your cloak obviously comes up. Mm-hmm. But also you notice um, an item recently found by Scarlet. The, as she's looking at it and tucking it away, there's some magic coming from that. What school? It gives you the type, yeah. Um, okay. Hang on a second. <laughs> Transmutation. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Okay, uh, and the thing that she got. Do you tell her about that? Do you share it with her? Uh, I'll say, that's a, uh, that's got transmutation magic all over it. And what does that do? Well, as a sorcerer, you absolutely under. Have you got arcana as a skill, by the way? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah? it's an actual uh, it's, skill. Oh, so you're the most magically proficient in. Have you got arcana? Uh, no. I'm you got arcana, that. so. Scarlet, you would have all picked this up as well in your conversation. You are the most magically aware of the group. Like, you get magic more than anyone here. Um, So when he talks about transmutation, this is magic to do with changing the nature of things. So, literally, water into wine led to gold. You know, that, like, transmutation is the alchemist's magic. It is the... um, If you wanted to change into the form of another creature, that's transmutation magic. And... Whilst you still don't know what this cap is, it has transmutation magic, you've just been told, running throughout it. Do you want to put it on? Every time. Yes. All right, you put it on. 
Um, also, you pick up um, a potion she recently found that would be... I don't, I don't know what it would be. Um, my... Is it just enchantments? Uh, Most no. magic items are just going to be enchantments. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I'll come back to you. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, what did, What was this thing wrong? Um, I've got to find that out. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to roll for that. Can you roll... D hundred again. So let me just see if you have to. As you put on the cap, um, mm-hmm. oh, it doesn't need. Uh, it doesn't require attunement. attunement, but comes to your head as you concentrate on it. Is the word breathe? <laughs> breathe. Just comes into your head. Okay. <laughs> Not sure what to make of that. Breathe. Ha! Maybe that's quite cool. Yeah, that's all that comes to you. Um, we're looking at your thing now, yeah? Yeah, okay. I'm 23. 23. Bear me a sec. God damn. Actually, roll 2d12. Okay. And add them up. Transmutation on that scroll. Yeah, that's a transmutation tool. I don't know what that means. It's a, uh, well, it's uh, magic that changes stuff. Oh. Oh. Also, you notice on her, um, that's uh, 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 somewhere on her person in one of her pouches, you get the sense that one of the, a coin size thing is uh, giving oh, off a yeah. very, Faint in charge. <laughs> what is that? I got like a. It's just. A, I think it had like a. I don't know if it had that. I can't remember. It had something on it. I think that's everything. Yeah. Anything else? No. Oh, you know your potion of healing. You knew what that yeah. was. Uh, I think that's everything. Okay. Is the arm blade considered magical? <laughs> yes, it would get off. It would give off magic. Oh, also, there's more stuff in this hoard than just these are just the items you oh, find. Yeah. Um, oh, firstly, I'd like one last. Per- there is one. Well, one last perception check to see if you've found or noticed everything. This is better. Item-wise. Oh, I'm, I'm better. I think you can all make it. Oh yeah. Whoever rolls highest maybe sees it. No, not me. Yeah, I just got seven. Yeah. Okay, twenty-three. Uh, D hundred. D hundred. Yep. Uh, eight. Uh, potion of healing. Not <laughs> <laughs> to fifty. It's like potion of healing. Potion of healing. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> sir! You got yourself a potion of healing. <laughs> um, all right. You also find within this. Are you looking for like other random treasures money, and stuff? Money, money. Yeah. Yeah. You also find. Give me. Um, Challenge rating zero to four. Um, roll D hundred for me again, please, Scarlett. Um, is that just this one? No, both of them. Yeah, remember those two. No, that's you... a D8. Oh, it's okay. Sorry, <laughs> you got it. You got it. Yes. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Okay, you also find. This so sucks. I love oh. it. Two, four, six, eight, ten. <laughs> ten copper pieces, you oh, find. No. You roll percentage. Okay. Right. 49. 49. You find. 
11 silver pieces. Okay. Percentage. Uh, 56. And you find 21 silver pieces. It's <laughs> kind of lame. Cool. There's no gold. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Hey, listen, that'll buy you a meal one time. <laughs> Don't diss it, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. About two gold in total. <laughs> so standing here on the doors, these massive double doors of this ruined keep, with the currently imperceptible barking sound coming from somewhere within this dark first story of this this old ruin, in search of good old fashioned treasure to pay for whatever answers that you're looking for for your individual and group quests that's where we're going to leave it this episode Ooh, well done. good work nice. some nice tactics in the battle there guys well done very nice